and welcome to the Benelli Rider YouTube channel. I've just received in the post this very very special little box here. What I've done is all the way from Italy has, has winged its way to me is a nice um, smoke screen. It's a givey so it's a proper make one. Um, the price of the actual screen and the shipping and everything will be in the description below. What we're going to do is we're going to unbox this right now and then what we'll do is we'll get on with actually fitting the screen so we'll show you what an easy job it is. Right, so let's get on with unboxing it. As you can see I've already had the box open once because I wanted to make sure that everything was alright before I did the video. As you can see it comes really well packed. So it's got bubble bubble wrap with it, paper. So it's really well wrapped, it comes all the way from Italy. The um, customs people have been in and had a look at it. As they do. Oh right, that's smashy. That's not smart. Right, so that is the Givy screen. What I'll do is I'll put some photographs up in the corner so you can have a really good look at it. Looks absolutely mint on the bike. Obviously what we'll do is when it's on the bike we'll take some photographs and we'll inlay those over the top of the actual install as well. So that is the screen. Looks like it's quite simple to fit. If you get it from the link below it also comes with a full fitting kit. You've got to be very very careful when you buy one of these because some of them look cheap but the cheap ones don't have a fitting kit with them. So then obviously you've waited two three weeks anything up to a month so 28 days to actually receive your screen and then you find out that it hasn't got a fitting kit in it and then you've got to fork out another 20 or 30 pounds and wait for the fitting kit to turn up so make sure you get one of these with a fitting kit provided right so let's go and fit it right so the first part of this job is removing the LCD screen so basically your dashboard really really simple to do there's two bolts two little allen key bolts I prefer to use a ratchet you can use a standard straight allen key if that's what you want to do you really really don't need many uh, tools to actually complete this job two allen keys and that's really about it Right, so one thing I actually like to do when I'm doing a job like this is get all the parts and everything that I need for the job into one place so I can check them all. Very, very important is to, to make sure that you've got all the parts that it says that you should have in the actual instructions itself. So the amount of washers, correct type, the amount of bolts, correct type, lengths. They usually come pretty self-explanatory but it's really important that you do make sure that all the bits are there give you a fantastic every piece of what i needed apart from the bolts or the washers etc they all had a spare one and that is that's worth its weight in gold that just even just having a spare so now what i'm doing is i'm checking everything as you can see i'm going through the actual instructions to get it straight in me and what i'm actually going to be doing It's all done with just photographs so you can actually see and understand what you're doing there's no actual written instructions because that's where a lot of mistakes can be made in interpretation Meat, but that's good enough. All right, sure. That's that, and and it goes back together. Looking at that, 
they go on to the light fitting. So we need to move this out of the way. Right, so now getting after getting our head straight of what the job entails, the next job now is to unclip the LCD screen. This is quite fiddly. There's actually a weather cover underneath, so there's a block connector, quite a big wide block connector, so it's nice and easy to handle. There's a weather sheath that goes over it, you need to roll that down first so it's out of the way and it doesn't keep flip, flipping back and getting in the way of your fingers while you're trying to get to the actual button itself. It's a standard clip, so all you do is you'll see two lines, plastic lines, and in the centre of that there's like a, a push button. So what you do is you push that as hard as you can and then just wiggle the actual uh, connector itself and it'll clip out. Right now the bracket itself connects to the top of the light fittings so you have to undo the two top light bolts which is what you can see me fiddling with now I'd already taken them out and you get new longer ones that fit into this because there is like little collars that go into them self explanatory when you actually look at the instructions but that's the way it goes it, they give you two longer bolts because obviously you've got the thickness of the bracket that goes on top of the normal length of the bolt so the bolts need to be slightly longer so you actually get those bolts as part of the kit that's what we're doing now and don't forget when you're building anything like this everything is only ever finger tight to start off with so we just do it all finger tight to start off with so we can still move it about and jiggle it so as we can actually get the positions of where we want it to go before we finally tighten it down Right, so the next step is the refitting of the LCD screen. So it's a reverse of taking it off. This bit can be a little bit annoying and a little bit fiddly because the bracket, the new bracket that you've put on, restricts the movement or restricts the access that you've got to actually manoeuvre the LCD clock so the, the actual box connector slots in properly. So this is what I've been doing. I've been fiddling about, it's took me about 10 minutes Obviously I've not put all that on the camera because otherwise it'd just be boring. And you'd be me using a bit of profanity as well because it was very annoying. But once I'd got my head round it and I realised how to do it, rather than struggling, um, if I'd have done it this way the first time and you can see me positioning now, this is what you need to do is you need to get your thumbs underneath it and manoeuvre it with your thumbs till it lines up with the actual um, block connector itself. Again, you've got to make sure that that weather sheath is rolled down out of the way because otherwise what happens is you've got hold of the sheath and, it's, and it pushes the rubber in between the actual connector and the body. So it makes it very difficult and it won't go in. And all you've got to do is just keep getting it and getting it until you feel it slide in. And when you slide in, you've got to give loads and loads of pressure on it and you'll hear a distinct click, which you might have heard there above my uh, commentary. But you'll hear a distinct click and then the actual LCD clock will be solid. Then it's just a matter of, here we go, what we're going to do now is put the bolts back in for the actual LCD display itself. So again, another bit of a fiddly job because there ain't much room down there. And I took the opportunity also, while the actual clocks were off, at the quite deep crevices where the bolts fit into and they get all like weather into them so they were like white and and like um, powdery so what I did was I got a cloth in there and cleaned them out while they had the opportunity so there's something for you they actually probably would be better if they actually had rubber bungs over the top of them I think it probably would have just made the made that a little bit better and it would have looked a bit better as well to be honest with you but there's me I'm just nipping these up obviously it's only holding an LCD clock on so you don't need to murder them down if Right, so here we're actually starting to fit the screen. It's another one of them, it's fiddly, but if you do it in sequence, 
it's not too bad so what I do is I do one of the bottom corners if you're right handed you will probably want to do the bottom left corner first and then walk, work up and towards you because that's what I do is I work because I'm left handed I put the bottom right one in and then I work up and away from myself and I find that easier getting the, the actual washers in and what have you is fiddly again but as you can see me here what I'm using is I'm using the end of the allen key to line the rubbers up what I do is I push them in with my fingers first get them as close as I can and then get the actual allen key in give it a bit of a circular motion round to line the bolts the actual sorry the washers up and then what I do is I go in as you can see with my fingers and just feel for the thread just lift it up and down until you feel it drop into the thread and then again just screw it in two or three turns like that and it'll stop it from coming back out but it'll still give you enough uh, wiggle room as you can see the screen there how I'm wiggling it I'm wiggling it now to get the actual rubbers down the back of it and I'm doing exactly the same thing again get the rubbers in and then just wiggle and wiggle it till you feel the thread two or three turns in and then you're on to your last one as you can see I've not filmed the last one because I, I actually got in the way of it I was stood in front so obviously you couldn't see that but now what I've done is I've just done that up I've talked the um, front screen bolts up because they're going through the plastic you don't want to crack the plastic so just make sure that you're nice and gentle with them so all it takes is sufficient pressure and nothing more alright so here I've added the couple of photographs of this which is the part numbers and the people you're getting it from if you go into eBay is Tago Rambini the link will be in the description below and that's what the actual screen looks like on the site on the bike itself and I think you'll uh, agree it actually makes the bike look a lot better and I'm hoping because of the shape of the screen it looks like it will keep the wind blast off your helmet at higher speeds because I do quite a bit of motorway work 